I think our Anglia is probably the least polished car here, to be honest. Beware of the moose. This dolly is very clean indeed, it's on Dolly Sprint Alley wheels. Right, well we've made it here. There's a few cars here already, which is good to see. A very nice little Hillman Husky here, 1964. This was the estate car version of the Hillman Minx, based on the Comma Cobb van body, but with windows and rear seats. Very rare car, quite practical as well. Bit of history in the window here. But will there be any other Ford Pops or Anglias here? What do we have here? Got a very rare late 70s Opal here. Is this a record? It is indeed. A great morning for it. Let's have a look at this Hillman Husky now. Let's have a look down this side. Well, so far it's quite a good turnout and there'll be cars arriving throughout the morning I imagine. Which is all good to see. Lovely weather for it. Next to this Elise, we've got a much modified minivan, but this one has a Wolseley Hornet front end on it in 1965. Bonnet straps. We've got a Dolomite coming in now as well. Where's he going? Got a rare Montego here, one of its headlights still on. This is a Mayfair edition. <laughs> Something for everyone here today, and standing out is this fantastic Volvo P1800 ES. I've got a feeling this one appeared at the Cape Stone Hall Classic Car Show last year. There was a pair of them at one of the meetings there. Let's have a quick look. So it's a fuel injected engine. That's a Bosch system, very similar to that that I had on the, the Volvo 164. So, uh, 2 litre fuel injection, 4 speed and overdrive, first registered 4th of April 1973, 86,500 miles. Beautiful car that. So the running gear was very similar to that in the Volvo 120, the Amazon, which of course was based on the running gear of the PV before that. Uh, the 140 series also had the same basic engine. There was the GL version of the 140 series, which was a four-cylinder with a fuel injection. Then you had the 164, which was a six-cylinder car, initially on carburetors, later also fuel injected. And this was like the 
the estate version, if you like, of the P1800S that was made famous on the Saint and programmes such as that. Original stickers in the back window. Just great lines, just look at that. What a superb example this is. Got a pair of TTs here, this one looks a little bit warm. And there's that Dolly Sprint and we caught a glimpse of before pulling in. Yeah. WUY triple five. Got a Triumph 2000. We saw this one at the last running of this particular event as well. Lovely straight six cylinder engine. Of course this is a reminder that when this car was made, Rolls Royce and Bentley were being produced just down the road here in Crewe. Of course that's no longer the case sadly, Rolls Royce is down at Goodwood under new ownership. But Bentley's still in town, let's have a quick look inside. Talking of Bentley, which one's that? Is that the... I don't know, Continental R? I don't know. the MG badged Rover we've got another Bentley this is Mulsan it's up for sale any takers a turbo R no less a really nice Daimler version of the XJ40 from about 1987 Yeah, back to the XJ40. Looks like a very smart example. Got a modified Mini. There's that PA Cresta. Got a V8 Burble, much modified PA Velox. Rear lights look very similar to those on a 59 Cadillac. Oh, we have got a pop. Also coming in, just have a quick look at the Velox again. We've got a Beetle. Chevy van. Talking of Chevrolet, we've got a C10 here, G Reg C10 pickup. Really original, looks like it's been oily ragged as opposed to fully restored. Yeah. 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 
That's really small. I'm not okay. So what would that be? G Reg, so about 1968 or thereabouts. Some of the original plates. I'm assuming they're the original plates. We've got a Michigan plate there. Yeah, that's in 1969. We've got a recreated plate here in American style of plates, but with the UK English registration on there. That's a really cool. And alongside this mighty C10 with this huge load bay. It's a long wheelbase. Is that the fleet side they call these? And by comparison here, we've got a step side. This is an earlier Chevrolet, much earlier, sort of late 50s, that's a guess. Wow, and what's this trailer? This trailer's been built up from the rear body of another pickup truck. Dairy County Hot Rods, Bosley of Cheshire. That is great. Look at that old fuel can. That's a great rig this is. So we've got a Ford trailer on the back of a Chevrolet truck, 641UYT. This is a Chevy Apache. Got some great old style sign writing here. Suitably aged. And here's one of the cars that at one time they were everywhere only a few years ago, but now you rarely see them. A little Fiesta and registration. It's a rare find to see one of those that isn't rotten around its uh, fuel filler cap. That's where they all seem to rot. There's an Alpha 156 coming in. Bit of everything here today. No, this is certainly the coolest vehicle here so far, I think. Please let me know in the comments what vehicle here you would particularly want to take home, because uh, like I said, so far there's a little bit of everything to keep most people uh, happy. But this, this I think is just really cool. And the trailer is just the icing on the cake. And over here in the American corner, one vehicle that's very hard to miss and ignore is this huge J registration Cadillac. If the size wasn't enough to sort of uh, make it stand out, the colour certainly helps it pop. Two door. Wonder who was the last person to play hopscotch here. There's the front view of that XJ40. I was meant to do this before, but I got a bit distracted by an Americana over there. But yeah, this is a really sound car. I mean, these didn't survive. I mean, they haven't really survived in huge numbers. Um, rust being the usual killer of any car of this age, really. And these are particularly prone to rotting on the bulkhead behind here. So sort of down in this area, and you open the bonnet around here. They're very prone to rusting, so to see one that's in such well cared for condition is really quite nice. But which would you have if you wanted a comfy car? The XJ40 Daimler or the Turbo R? Decisions, decisions. I'm thinking that Bentleys of this era are much more appealing than what they're currently making. It's all gone a bit too footballer, I think, but this era, um, sort of 1990s, I think they really had it all pretty much covered. There's that Triumph 2000 again on the alley wheels, two-tone. 
this appears at one or two local events as does the Rolls Royce alongside this is an interesting GMC sort of camper van M registration dad's a fan of his X350 XJ so I better, better include a quick snap of this one very smart blue colour Well, let's have a look at the cars and other vehicles that are inside the building here. There's a very well preserved locomotive, of which I know absolutely nothing. It's diesel powered, that's all I can tell you. <laughs> but hopefully if you know a bit more about this one, if you could uh, pop a note in the comments, that would be fantastic. So let's see who's undercover in here today. There's that Chevrolet Astro van that came in before. An immaculate low slung Beetle. I assume you can lift this up and down because uh, the bottom of the car is on the deck so I assume it's on air suspension Got a Tesla and here's that pop or Anglia that came in before somewhat different to mine yes very very different to mine few minis in this corner. This black one here, we've got a very original looking C Reg 1985 Mini here. This is one of the one of the many limited editions that they did back in the day. This is a Piccadilly. Slightly plusher interior I think compared to a standard Min. Looks really nice. Where do you normally go looking for rust on a Mini? Well basically anywhere they can rust around the gutters down here where the subframe mounts on floors sills boot floors this one appears to have a boot floor but yeah they go pretty much anywhere the hinge hinge post down here this seam here I remember mum's mini back in the 1980s rotted out there they always go there around the wings where the wing joins the front panel on that seam but this one looks really good. Is it just a well-preserved car or has it been restored? I don't know, but it's really nice. And like I say, this is a bit of a mini corner because behind it, we've got several of the Whitby Morrison ice cream vans. They're built in crew and they have a quite a large heritage fleet. On the left is this X-Reg Mini, which is really a bonny little car indeed. This is based on a mini pickup. You can see the shape of the, the original pickup body along there. And then this has all been built on afterwards. It's just a real bonny little survivor. Next to that, we've got a Thames uh, ice cream van based on the Anglia. Of course, this technically this is a Thames 500 weight, the three. This is a 307E. That was the internal model identifier for the commercial variant of the Anglia back in the day. One interesting feature of these Anglia vans and ice cream vans is the the line of the bottom of the door it angles up towards the back I'm not sure if you can see that and that was designed so that when people were doing deliveries with an Anglia van that when you swing the door open it's less likely to clobber the curb when you're parked at the side of the road that was the idea behind that next to the 307E we've got the Bedford CF Mark 1 Again, beautifully preserved. These get taken to sort of local events quite regularly, but they've got quite a huge number of these preserved vehicles. It's always nice to see a few here. I'm not sure if they're permanently resident here or if they just bring them out for events such as this, but either way, it's really cool to see them. What else do we have? We've got a Mark 1 Toyota MR2. These are becoming quite rare now. Late 1980s, F registration. Alongside that, we've got a Capri A Reg, so about 1982 two or 83 probably about 83 i think really smart car it's just an interesting place to sort of see old vehicles in because like i say this is a crew heritage where they preserve a lot of the old railway history associated with the town and wherever you look there's always interesting little things just to have a quick look at got an old co-op society bike up there I've 
crash over what this little Royal Mail vehicle is. Electric cars, I'm assuming this is for use at a station for pulling trolleys full of uh, post, sacks of post. That's a guess. Nice old signs. Lots of very heavy things. Look at this magnificent uh, loco here, the Duke of Gloucester. I remember filming this old late 40s V8 Ford at Cape Stone Hall as well last year. Somewhat modified, but most of the metalwork looks fairly original. Left hand drive, of course, as so many of these are because they're all imported. Step side body again, a bit like the older of the two Chevys that were parked outside. There's actually quite a large number of American vehicles here for a fairly small show, it's, uh, it's quite interesting. Alongside the Ford truck we've got a Ford Mustang from 1966, the notchback. Really smart example, just look at the shine on those wheels. These were available with either the straight six or a V8. This one. That's the 289, so that's the V8 version. Base, same basic engine, I think, as in the early Cobras, the 289s. And there's its later cousin alongside. That one's beauty. Tucked away over here, we've got a Mark 1 Ford Escort Twin Cam H Reg. Absolute beauty, this is. This is a lovely thing. You can see the owner's lurking over there, might have a quick word with him after. But Twin Cam Escort, about as good as it gets in the world of escorts. So what's the so what's the story with the engine then you were saying? It's a Wilcox built engine. Mm. It's a, nine, a 711 block. Right. A bigger block to make it 1700 and it's a 700 cc, 170 brake horse it's got. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's got high lift cams and all the gizmos on it. Wow. Uh, I've had it for what? Must have had it about 10 years. Replaced me. Mm. Uh, you had a Mark II before. Mark II. Right? Cortina had a Mark, Lotus, wasn't it? I had a Mark II Lotus yeah. Cortina, yeah. That's right. And it does many shows and it's given me some fun and it's still giving me good fun and it's appreciated in value every year. Of course, yeah. How many of these did they make then, you reckon? Uh, I think it was 800 and something. 800, yeah, is that it? Yeah, Over yeah. what, a couple of, of years? Of the twin cam, yeah. Right. The very right. early ones were mm. made in 68 and they had square headlights, which was an Escort GT shell. Oh, right. Yeah, right. yeah. And then they used the AVO shells after the round So headlights. what's the difference with the shells then compared to like a standard uh, The more Escort, stronger. Is it? So they yeah. beefed it all yeah, up, Yeah, it's like the it? Mexico shell. Right, so yeah. these were used what, rallying and that kind That's of thing? That's right, yeah, yeah. And the engine, Lotus? Yeah, the engine's the same engine as the Elan and... Uh, right, 14 right, and what have you, right, yeah, right. yeah. So you're going to hang on to this one? I'll hang on to this, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Use it as a coffin, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and what you call a Ford petrol head. Yeah, yeah, I've noticed, yeah. I've noticed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheers for that. No, it's a very Thank great you. example. Thanks for the info. I'll have another quick look round it. I mean, this is just beautifully turned up. Yeah, yeah, pop the bonnet, please. I mean, just look how clean this is underneath. This has got to be one of the cleanest escorts anywhere, I think. Wow! That's one clean engine bay. <laughs> so the Webbers, is that an original setup there? Yeah, the original it? setup, yeah. Is it? Yeah. Wow, wow. Yeah. 
Do you know much about where it was early in its life then? Or uh, who had it originally? No, or it's never been raised to rally or anything like that. It's just no. been a road car all its life. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Oh, Which so has basically it came out of the showroom and back from the strut brace bear. Right. All the rest of it. And the Wilcox, is that? That's a... So is that like an upgraded version of the engine? Yeah, then? he builds engines. He built Roger Clark's engines the other day. Oh, did he? Yeah, oh, when he was rallying. Yeah. Yeah. Well, wow. he's still going now, and his son's taking over the business in Leicestershire. They are. Oh, right. They're all hand built. He's got his own engine number and everything. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, that's a beauty. That is. Yeah. Thanks for thanks for showing it us. Do we have here Cadillac? Wow! <laughs> Series 62 of 1952. It says according to the uh, number plate. There's a really good turnout at this classic car show today. What a pattern of car that is! In addition to this Cadillac, since we were last out here, this Plymouth satellite turned up. Huge station wagon, sounding as it should do. Two pipes, V8 of course. Don't want to sit here for too long. It's a beauty. It's an incredible condition this one. Smart little SLK. A few later voxels. There's that PA that we saw before. And tucked away in the corner here, we've got a what's that a series three Land Rover? One of the short wheelbase ones. The VWs, it's the LT. We've got a Trans Am coming in. <laughs> you have to keep your eyes open in this game. Oh, got the, the motorcycle contingent has arrived. Uh, 
And over here we've got a glorious four-door Aston Rapid, Aston Martin Rapid. What year is this one? 2011. 2011. Yeah. These are a rare sight, these are. Yeah. That's the great thing about this show, you just get all sorts of different vehicles. It's 12 um, Southern Death. 12, six, yeah. 6 litre. V12. Wow. And here we've got a fantastic old Riley, pre-war Riley. There's a bit of everything here, isn't there, really? Oh, I tell you, today. Class. Next up a TR6 with a fuel injected 2.5 litre engine of course. Which is basically a reskin of the TR5. To be honest, it's a lot busier than I thought it would be. An XR3i Cabriolet here. I think this VW, I think these are the LT, if I remember correctly. There's an LT pickup truck, it's for sale, four and a half thousand pounds. Looks like a good usable vehicle, that. So you've got you've got a Land Rover over there, a VW LT, and the Aston Martin Rapide. Real variety. I think they'll be running rides later. Had to swap batteries for the camera, and over there is a Mark II Transit twin rear wheels. I don't see too many good ones of those around anymore. Parked away over here is that Mark II Transit we caught a glimpse of pulling in before. T Reg, so late 1970s. It's the Mark II, like I say. Twin rear wheels, side door. Really rare survivor. MGB Chrome bumper but with the export marker lights on the wings Same at the back So was this perhaps an export car that's come back and it's been converted to right hand drive? Sure, I just saw a 2CV pulling in. There it is. So which of the limited editions was that? They did the Dolly, didn't they, and the Charleston. Got a smart Alpha. Here we go, Citroen 2CV6 Special. Very bonny example, A Reg, about 1983. MGF took the way in the corner here. The rover alongside that. Got a sunbeam rape here now. We're going to get flattened if we're not very careful. Oh, 
Two MGs together now. The beach coma. Please let me know in the comments if these sort of show reviews and walk arounds are of interest. Always helps when you're trying to come up with new ideas for videos. If you know what people like to watch and what they don't like to watch. There's a V12 engine of this uh, Lagonda Rapid, or Aston Martin Rapid rather. When did this Farina come in? I didn't see this pull in. Old Princess, the VDP. Let's have a look at the back. So it's a 3 litre. The Van der Plas 4 litre R had a slightly different roof line, horizontal rear lights. But this is a 3 litre Princess. And there's the badge just to prove it. But yeah, it's a beautiful car, that is. I didn't see this coming in. I did upload a video all about the big Farinas and the Oxfords and the Cambridges the other day, so if you've not seen that particular photo collection video, check it out if that kind of car is your thing. So many of these have been lost now due to the ravages of time and banger racing and all this kind of thing. So to see one that's been preserved so beautifully is this two-tone three-litre princess is a real treat. Alongside us in Anglia is Mike's Droop Snoot Vauxhall Forenza. Mike's been a long-term supporter of the old classic car forum, so if you've not seen that, please pop along and have a, a look at that. It's been running over 15 years now. Mike's been on there for probably most of those. He often takes it out to local events. A high performance Forenza. Next to the late 1980s Montego, we've got a Maxi 1750 HL, the posh one. Another one of Isigonis' little, little projects. Anyone want, remember the Maxis? Did anyone watching this used to have a Maxi, I wonder? The very early cars had cable change gear change as far as I remember, which wasn't universally popular, so they soon dropped that. It's a really nice example that is. Next to the Maxi, got another X350 Jag. We've got an X-Type TVR 350i, I've seen this one here before. Rover V8 powered of course. And the Vauxhall Viva HC, this is another regular classic car shows around here. It's next to the main railway line. Go back to the Viva. style wheels. Right, let's see what else has turned up that we've missed so far. This is a Vauxhall Omega. There's that TR6 that came in before. A few goodies for sale on the bonnet. Anything we need? Probably not. Here's that glorious Riley that came in before. I'm not quite sure on the model of this one. I'll look at the registration number. 
I'm sure that'll probably tell me. Someone will know. Someone will have posted elsewhere on the internet and identified this one for me. Maybe it's other links, possibly. I don't know. It's probably the oldest car here, anyway. Let's have a look inside the cockpit. We've got a tonneau cover, but fortunately it's been left open so we can see this wonderful old dashboard. Got various controls in the centre of the steering wheel on the left. It controls the advance and retard of the ignition. On the right is the charging and the headlamp arrangement. And what a Bobby Dazzler that is! GB plate on the back, old AA one. MGB, I saw this one playing before. This is the one, like I say, these are usually only seen on the US market cars which makes me wonder if possibly this one's been brought back in from the state and converted to right hand drive and possibly restored when it's back here I don't know or maybe someone's just bought them just to add them on just for a bit of extra extra safety and illumination If you like your old railway arm, there's plenty here to interest you at the Crew Heritage Centre. So if you've not been here, I'd recommend popping in, even when there isn't a classic car show taking place. But there is a classic car show taking place, and let's see what's over here. Now this pulled in before, this is that 100E Prefect. Four-door cars with a Prefect, if it's a two-door... It would be an Anglia or a Popular, the 100E range, but the four doors were always prefects. <coughs> the TVR just pulling in behind me. And there were two versions of the prefect in this shape of body shell. You've got the 100E side valve power car, the 1172, which is what this is. And there was also the 107E, and that had the overhead valve engine from the 105E Anglia in it. It was a bit of a stopgap model right at the end of 100E production. And the 107E, as far as I know, the only visual difference you can see when the car drives past is the strips on the front wing. On the side valve power car like this, the strip just carries on to there. The 107E has a little dog leg which comes down to here. As far as I know, that's pretty much the only difference visually between the overhead valve and the previous side valve powered cars. WKT175 turns up quite a few of the shows locally. And alongside that, We've got a 1967 MGB GT E-Reg, only ran from January to July of 1967. And then thereafter they went from, the letters changed every August, I think it was, yes. So they ran July to August from this year, but July 67 was when that was introduced. And here we have an MGC with the, was it, 3 litre straight 6 engine. This is a Roadster. Another beautiful car here in MG Corner. Took a lot of re engineering to prize that big six cylinder engine into the engine bay of the MGB body shell. It wasn't just a case of dropping it in, all the front suspension had to be altered. It was a big, big job, and they weren't universally popular. I think, in a way, the V8 came along and took over from the straight six MGC, but these are a beautifully smooth engine. Alongside that, we've got an Austin 3 litre. This is a very original looking car in brown. Again, straight six engine. Looks somewhat familiar to what's in here. Twin carburetors, really original looking paint. Very original looking car indeed. This was based kind of on the, the Austin and the Morris 1800 body shell. And just beefed up to take the bigger engine, quite a plush interior. And here we are, we can see all the wonderful old walnut dashboard here, the walnut veneer dash. <laughs> so what's the history of this one then? Do you know where it's been or what it's yes, done? Stoke car. It's a Stoke, oh so it's local. It's Stoke car. Um, the first owner, um, his son-in-law contacted me 
uh, about three or four years ago, recognised okay. it, sent the photo to his wife. And oh, said, right. Is this your dad's car? And she said, Yes, that is my dad's car. <laughs> wow. The second owner pretty much put it in a garage and brought it out for MOTs. Brilliant. The third owner uh, did the same but lived in South Africa, so came mm. home in the summer and went back in the winters, oh. in, in our winters, Great. and did the same. <laughs> um, so literally just came out, went back in, mm. MOT went back in wow. uh, which is why it's still a, a shade under 29,000 miles from is, is that all it is yes, wow. it's so, just you can just tell from looking at the paint our original everything is yes. you know. yeah because they didn't make many of these did they I think they made 9,000 is that it 400 and oh, they didn't in, in sell the well did they yeah, the yeah. chassis numbers go over 10,000 which is <laughs> odd um, typical Austin or mm, mm. yes the, yeah. um, wow. I think there's 46 on the road in the UK with another 30 something odd songs. Is that all? Wow, yeah, there's one wow. in Germany, there's one in Portugal, there's a lot in New Zealand. Are there? Yes. Did they just sell well though, or did they just survive better there, do you think? Uh, they sold quite well there, but right. they, they did survive better there as right, well. Right. Um, yeah, there's about 30 something in New Zealand. Wow. Um, yes. But they sold well so in New Zealand. Now. And there's a couple in Australia apparently. But so I wonder why they didn't really take off then, do you? Oh, before their time. Right. The P6 was already out. The P5B was a Triumph 2000, that was 2000, out, wasn't that it? That was already out. Um, the Capri's always looked better anyway. <laughs> didn't they, to be fair. Um, so, I yeah. guess the Land Crab had been around for a little while the by the time this came out anyway, I suppose. Yes. So it was yeah, it has. So unfortunately, this got the unfortunate name of the, of the, of the Land Lobster, didn't it? The Land Lobster. <laughs> it was bigger. <laughs> yes, bigger than ever. Bigger, although it yeah. shares mm. Austin doors. doors. Are they the same as the Maxi, then? Exactly the same yes. as the Maxi. <laughs> yes, I was thinking yeah. that, yeah. And the same yeah. door handles as the MGC. Oh, right. Next to me. Well, I'm guessing door. the engine's related. Yeah, seven bearing crank on that one, though. I think it's five, possibly, on that Oh, right. Or three, right. Even three. Right. But all these three are from the mm. Car Club. Oh, I see. All three of these cars. Wow, wow. That's glorious. Let's have a look inside here. Take a look. I watch the YouTube channel quite a lot. Do you? Oh, jolly good. <laughs> and we've got a Moggy Miner here. Mini light wheels. Old case on the back. The MGC has now got the bonnet down, so have a quick look. There's a VW arriving. And a stag behind that. Okay, I'll tell you, I didn't I honestly didn't think this meeting would be this busy. Very bonny little prefect this one. Lovely burble from the 3 litre Triumph V8. Very nice. There's the Volkswagen that we saw pulling in before. Well, I can't think of a better way of spending a Sunday morning than being here on a pleasant day. Sun's coming out every now and again. Another Dolomite, don't remember this one. And this is that TVR that I caught a very brief, brief glimpse of before. I don't quite know what model this is, is it a Tamar? Someone will know please, let me know in the comments. Blackpool's finest of course. This dolly is very clean indeed, it's on Dolly Sprint Alley wheels. A closer look at that Morris Miner. If anyone remembers the Fall Guy TV series in the 80s, this is a replica of the truck that he drove. Colt Seavers was the character's name, I think. Mighty GMC. <laughs> and still they're coming in. Sierra Grande. 
filed up the wicket. That's cool, man. I'd drive that. I'm not sure that would be We've got a Porsche. Let's get out of the way. I don't think the dog liked that one. We've got a Hillman Imp. The Cavalier is a rapidly disappearing sight. Oh, a PV. Regulus to old classic car will know that I'm a bit of a. Ooh, what's this? Ford Galaxy here. Regulus to the uh, channel and the old classic car website will know I'm a bit of a fan of old Volvos. I had a 164 until recently, and then before that a 444. And this is a 544. I had one of those, a pale blue. Very bonny car. Beautiful condition that is. This is a 1964 Ford Galaxy 500. Not for the shine retiring. Incredible car this is. <laughs> just look at the lines down there. This whole car meeting is really turning out to be a very well attended event, especially considering it's January and the first of the year. I'm surprised just how many cars have turned up. There's a much modified Ford F100 here, 1953. Alongside that, I'm not quite sure what this is. It's a Chevy. Eva, Eva. And here, somewhat modified Chevy 3 100 half ton truck. Earlier versions had the split windscreen, this has got the one piece screen, so I'm guessing this is about what 53 ish, somewhere around there. Although they're all very, very nice. Yeah. Let's have a look in the window, see what the details are. 54. Step side pickup, five window deluxe cab. Five window because it's got these extra corner cab windows here, the curved ones. They didn't all have that, and that's quite a sought after cab. Real America corner now over here. Hidden away over here, somewhat dwarfed by the Plymouth satellite, is this gorgeous little Austin Healey Sprite Mark I. Usually referred to as the frog eye in this country, or the bug eye in America, for fairly obvious reasons. Super little car. Just popped inside the building again, and we've got a Triumph TR3A. Again, I think this is a regular at the local meets around here. A couple of extra badges there, RAC, AA. We've got the Lucas Square 8, even though they're rectangular. These are referred to as the Square 8 fog lamps. Lovely car. Very smart hood on it. That's removable side screens. There's no wind-up windows back in those days. Now, there's always been some debate as to which way around you put a luggage rack because you see you've got the raised bit at the back there. Now some people believe you should have it that way around to stop things falling off and when you've got a very slopey boot lid like this that makes sense. But other people advocate having the raised bar at the front so that if you brake hard the case or whatever you've got on there doesn't end up going through the back window of the car 
and into the back of your head. So I guess it depends very much on the particular car that you're putting it onto. If you've got a very slopey boot lid, you put the raised bit at the back. If it's fairly level, like say on a Spitfire, you may have the raised bit at the front, like I say, to stop anything flying forward should you have to brake hard. This is a Healy we saw pulling in before and it's a 100M. Louvered bonnet, leather bonnet strap, perfect. Well, that really is a stunning car. Here's that incredible two-door 1952 Cadillac that we saw pulling in before. What a bit of kit this is. All the original pattern has been lacquered over by the look of it, just to preserve it all. What an incredible car this is. What's this badge down here? Lone Star Dallas. Is that the original supplying dealer, I wonder? Tucked away next to the little pale blue Mini is this Triumph Spitfire 1500. Uh, the Spitfire was the first car that I pieced back together back in the late 1980s. That was a Mark III. This is a 1500 with the slightly larger version of the same four-cylinder engine, which can actually trace its roots all the way back to the standard eight of the early 1950s. That engine had a really long production run in varying capacities. This is a 1500. The engine was shared with the rival in-house MG Midget in rubber bumper form, of course. This one's really nicely turned out. Some extra gauges there on the top of the dash just to keep an eye on some of the other vital systems. Overdrive equipped car. The button to engage the overdrive is on the gear lever itself. Oh, that's a real beauty, that one. Mini light style wheels. Couple more interesting two wheelers. We've got a Yamaha DT175 yeah. and a Laverda, 750cc Laverda from the early 1970s. Right, here's that TVR again. I've just bumped into the owner and he told me this is actually it's not a Tamar as I originally guessed badly. This is a 1600M. They only made about 150 of these. It's a Kent, Ford Kent, 1600 engine in there. So I'm guessing if they only made 1600, there'll be very few of them still around now. Nice, it's got the full length roof. I guess with that large rear window, it could become an oven in there on a particularly hot day. But yeah, it's really nice. I think our angle is probably the least polished car here, to be honest. I think there's been a couple of new arrivals recently. I do like this Husky though. 
Here's that vintage bike that we saw playing before. This is a 1929 Douglas Real Oily Ragger. The chap who owns this, who I've known for many years, has also got a Model AA truck. But this is a regular attender for many of the shows around here. Here's that lovely little PV544 that came in before. Super original car. These were all left-hand drive. These were never officially sold here in the UK, so the only ones that you see here now, like the 444 and the pale blue 544 that I used to have, have all been imported privately. The 444 started out with a 1400cc engine, and these had the 1800 engine, the B18 engine that went on to power the P1800S and of course the Amazon saloons afterwards. But this was very much based on the design and shape of a 40s Ford. And this Mini is a fairly recent arrival as well. This is another limited edition, the Mini 35. That really isn't. No. <laughs> and then they said, oh, hey, do you want the full time job? This is a super original car, this is. Beware of the moose. This is wonderful pattern on this. I apologise if this video rambles on a little bit. I wasn't expecting this many vehicles here, so this is probably going to be quite a long video to watch. So uh, please stick with it. I appreciate all the views, comments, likes and everything else. And of course, people subscribing is always great as well. That's well, a real treat to see this 544. I've got a real soft spot for these and I'd happily have another one again. They drive superbly and they're very popular in historic rallying nowadays as well these and the Amazons because they just drive so well. The little Morris Thousand coming in, Jay Reg, quite a late example of the breed. The hot rod that's turned up. Okay, whose is that engine then? Where did that come from? Well, I think that'll probably do for this particular video. Uh, we've seen everything that's going to turn up. Uh, it's probably a little bit longer than I had planned on doing, but uh, there's just so many different cars here. So thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe, all the usual stuff, and uh, more videos along very, very soon. Bye for now.